Okay, here's another horizontal circle example, okay, where you're required to resolve forces. This diagram, it shows an aeroplane banking to make a horizontal turn. So in this, actually in this chapter, right, it's pretty straightforward one. If it's horizontal, they will tell you. If it's vertical, they will tell you. So just follow the question. So if it's a horizontal turn, I know the center of circle is somewhere here. So the aeroplane is about to make a turn in this direction. Okay, this looks like the butt, the butt or the back, the back end of the airplane. Okay, right. Next. Again, if you are confused, you can always refer to a handy dandy uh, diagram. I need to put this side by side so you can see. So when I'm playing this, you will notice that this is actually the back end. So maybe somewhere here. It's moving away. But it's tilted in the opposite direction. No? Okay, let me draw the forces for you. So it says here that the speed is this much. So this is our V. And the radius of the turning is 800 meter. Okay, so the aeroplane will always tilt towards the direction that is turning. So the center of your circle is actually here. Okay, and it says copy the diagram and on the diagram, draw and label the forces acting on the aeroplane. Okay, I guess I can do it directly on this drawing. But I'll tell you what, I will crop it and make it bigger. Okay, so this is normal them to ask you to uh, draw the forces on the diagram given. So first things first, we will draw weight. Because weight is easiest to draw, right? Weight is always vertically downwards, mg. Okay, and what about the lift? Lift will be 90 degree to the wings. Okay, so you see whether the aeroplane tilt this side or tilt the other side. No? So wherever the aeroplane is tilting, here will be the center of your circular motion. Here is your C. It may not be so near, la, okay? It may be far, far, far away because it's 800 meter, but the direction of C is this side. Okay, well, hang on. Let me draw a bit to scale for the people out there who need things to be a little bit for scale. Okay, there we go. Are we still in the frame? Yes, we are. So we expect the center to be kind of here, lah, very, very far away because the radius is 800 meters after all. Okay, so a circular part will be something like this. Okay, turning, lah, turning away. Okay, hopefully that is clear. So draw the forces acting on the aeroplane. I'm going to call this lift L. This is the airplane lift due to the engine and Bernoulli's principle. So here it says, calculate the angle that the aeroplane makes with the horizontal. Okay, I'm going to draw a horizontal line here. This is the angle of theta that I want. So based on my current drawing, the enlarged one, this is the angle of theta. I'm looking for this theta. Okay, so Miss, do we repeat the whole thing again? Yes. Repeat the whole thing that you have done a few times and hopefully you are good by now. So first things first, we have decided the direction of the center of the circle is here. So we must have an unbalanced force pointing towards the left. Okay, so to find this unbalanced force, I need to resolve our beautiful aeroplane. Uh, our beautiful aeroplane. The lift of the aeroplane. Okay, so I don't know about you, but I see alternate angles here of a parallel line. So this is the Z, okay? So because of this alternate angle, I can confidently say that this is theta. And because this is theta, and inside the fact that the lift is 90 degree to the wings of the plane, and also because we are resolving two forces, I mean two values of forces that are also 90 degree to each other, this angle here will naturally be your theta. Okay, because the angle here is 90 minus theta. Okay, so this one is theta. 
So I have explained this also just now in the concept video. You can go and watch it again for a more detailed explanation. But this one beside the angle, so this is L cos theta. Okay, this one pointing towards the center of the circle, L sine theta. Okay, so pointing towards the center of the circle. This one will be equal to centripetal force. Okay, so we are asked to find theta. I guess the next step will be to write equations. Oh? So L sine theta will provide centripetal force, so it will be equal to Fc. But in this case, L sine theta will be equal to, I will use mv square over r in this equation because you are, I'm given the value of v and r. v and r. Okay. You know what I write here? Lah. Because I am given r as 800 meter and v as, what was v again? 75 meter per second. Good news in SI, no need to convert. Okay, so you may be thinking, oh, miss, we can substitute here. Well, we could, but you see, I don't have L and I don't have M, which is a similar problem. So too many unknown. We got to write a second equation. So the second equation, I'm going to call this equation first step. Second step, we are going to consider the fact that this aircraft is in a horizontal circle. So the upward force, L cos theta, must balance the downward force, mg. So from here, I can say L cos theta is equal to mg. So, yay, equation 1. Equation 2, familiar process by now. I'll take 1, divide by 2. Okay, so L sine theta over L cos theta, this will be equal to mv square over r divided by mg. And the good news here is the L that you did not have cancels off. The M that you did not have also cancels off. And what you have left behind is tangent theta is equal to v square over rg. And we can calculate theta now because your speed is 75 square. And then... Your radius is 800 meter, gravitational acceleration 9.81. Now you can find your theta law. Okay, let me press my calculator. 809.81. So this one is with a tangent inverse together. I get 35.6 degrees. Okay. So hopefully by now you will begin to see a pattern. The force diagrams are very similar. The name of the forces that is the one that changes. Okay, so as long as you can resolve the force in the direction of the centripetal force direction, which is the direction of net force, which is the direction of C, this calculation becomes trivial. Trivial means doable. Okay, so that's it for this airplane example. And just a reminder, the force diagram for airplane, pendulum, bank track, they're all the same for this very reason. Because you are tilting a little bit to maintain a horizontal rotation. So this is what I mean by 3D because, my friends, this thing is kind of 3D. Okay. That's it for horizontal 3D circles. We are going to move on to vertical circles next. See you there.